Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Visit drjoelwade.com, scroll down, and click the Audible banner to get two free audiobooks. And start your free Audible trial today. You are now listening to the Mastering Happiness Podcast with Dr. Joel Wade. Happiness isn't just about good times. Sometimes life throws us some truly scary, awful circumstances. Or truly scary opportunities. And how we deal with these is essential for the kind of life we create. Let's look more closely at this today. I'm Joel Wade, and welcome to my podcast. Sometimes life hurts, even a really good life. Everything doesn't always go as planned. There are setbacks and challenges and sometimes tragedies. Living a happy life is not about pretending to be cheerful or denying any of life's hardships. Sometimes, We have to do things in an emergency that calls on everything we have. Or sometimes we're faced with opportunities that stretch us way outside our comfort zone. And being able to rise to that challenge can make a huge difference for our future possibilities and sense of self. We strengthen ourselves and grow our character when we persevere, when we're able to stumble and pick ourselves up, when we face a challenge, a necessity, or opportunity and continue on through. Doing this requires courage. Every one of us has experienced failure. Whenever we're challenged to reach high, to go outside our comfort range, we risk the chance that we'll fall, that we won't quite make it. Can you think of a time when you failed at something? Then picked yourself up, dug in, and done some really hard work to turn that failure around? I'm sure you can, And I suspect that when you think about a time like that, even though it may have been painful and difficult, it's also something you probably feel stronger for having done. When we do such things, we earn something that we couldn't have achieved otherwise. You're different from it. You earn a reputation with yourself as a person who can endure through hard times and come out the other side. Sometimes, what we face can be exciting and fun. Sometimes, it's overwhelming and we feel like hell. Sometimes the challenges can seem too daunting, and the urge to give up is strong. But Winston Churchill said it well, when going through hell, keep going. Facing the struggles of life with the best we have within us is part of the triumph of a life well lived. And these struggles aren't always external. They can be internal as well. Psychological problems are sometimes the hardest challenges because it's not so obvious to others what it is we're dealing with. It can look from the outside that there's no problem, so it can be hard to find the compassion and support we need. Why don't we just get over that depression or anxiety? Why don't we just stop drinking or focus better? Because these internal struggles are often invisible to others, they're often seen as rare, unfortunate, and mysterious breakdowns of normal functioning. But the truth is, Most, if not all of us, struggle with some form of psychological challenge. We may get depressed or sad. We may get anxious or afraid. We may find it hard to engage our self-discipline at times. We may have more serious issues dealing with thoughts or emotions. We may face these challenges more or less often, or with more or less intensity. These aren't all necessarily pathologies. They can be a natural part of life. The challenge, whatever they may be, even when they're more daunting, is to struggle with them as effectively as we can so that they don't become our defining characteristic. We each have to master ourselves, our own emotions, thoughts, impulses, willpower, and consciousness. This doesn't just happen for us. It's an active, deliberate thing. And by defining psychological distress as an unusual abnormality on its face, we perpetuate an idealized illusion of healthy human functioning. Think about it. If we don't eat right, or exercise, or get enough sleep, our health will suffer. If we don't read, or study, or challenge our minds, our intellect will suffer. Why would our psychological and emotional health be automatic? If we don't strive to understand and master our emotions and impulses, our emotional and psychological life will suffer. It's normal and healthy to have to work at and master our emotions and thoughts. 
to bring conscious awareness and effort to what's true about our unique internal experience. Looking at psychological challenges this way changes the equation considerably, from a scenario where we're kind of a passive victim to one where we're an active agent of our own existence. When I was in my early 20s studying with Nathaniel Brandon, I asked him, what's the most important thing that you bring to your work with clients? He thought for a moment and said, I look for the best within them, even if they don't see it themselves, even if they don't show much of it to me at first. I look for the best within them, and I speak to that part. I encourage that part, and I help them to find it within themselves. Whatever our challenges may be, in order to heal and strengthen ourselves, we need to look for the very best within us. I want to say very personally that this is why I do what I do. When I get to work with a client or clients who are determined to make a better life for themselves, or a better relationship for themselves, or to face a challenge with the best they have to offer, I know that I am witnessing an act of courage, and even sometimes an act of heroism. This is what inspires me more than anything. Whether it's an athlete aiming to perform at his or her absolute best, or a person who's striving to overcome intense anxiety in order to reach a goal, or someone who has felt helpless and depressed but is committed to pulling themselves up and out of their depression, or a couple who have hurt each other and allowed bad habits and reactions to harm their trust and love, but who are determined to make a loving relationship that works. That expression of the human spirit is the same. It's the heroic spirit. It's the human will feeling the pull of probability, the seduction of bad habits or powerful impulses, but directing itself in a different, more conscious, more creative, more effective, and more human path. This quality of self-ownership is the best of humanity. For me, it's the most inspiring and moving quality that an individual can express. That I get to help people striving to possess and direct this quality in themselves is a tremendous honor, an exhilarating adventure. The bottom line is, dealing with life's challenges effectively requires courage. It's easy to think that courage is a quality that some people just have and some people don't. But, like happiness itself, It's not really something that you have. It's something that you do. Something that you earn. And by practicing the skills that can strengthen it, you can get better at it. You can purposefully become more courageous. This isn't about comparing yourself to anybody else. We each have different thresholds for fear, different capacities for attention, different levels of physical endurance. The mission is not to be the bravest, toughest person in the world. The mission is to bring out the very best that you personally can bring to your life. C.S. Lewis said that courage is every virtue at the testing point. We might value honesty, but sometimes telling the truth can be scary. So without courage, we won't do it. We might value integrity, but to hold to what we know, to what we profess to care deeply about, will eventually hit resistance somewhere. Without courage, We won't hold true to ourselves, and we'll regret it later. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's the ability to enter into and carry out actions even though you feel fear. In this sense, there can be no courage without fear. Courage is necessary to face any conflict or uncertainty, and it's the essential ingredient for strengthening our character. Because to own your life and to live with integrity to your values and deepest beliefs you'll also have to assert yourself, sometimes in scary situations. Let's look at how we can build courage. We all have different comfort zones and different thresholds for fear. One friend of mine became both a Marine and a Green Beret at different times in order to overcome his fears. For someone else, just trying a new restaurant can be a stretch. Find where your comfort zone's edges are and challenge yourself to step outside of them. I don't mean that you should do stupid things just because they scare you, but if you're holding back from doing something that matters to you out of fear, give yourself a challenge. If you fear public speaking, join a Toastmasters group. If you long to start your own business but are afraid to dive in, 
Find a step you can take that you can manage. Take a class or talk with a friend who has a business. Then take another step you can manage. When you're facing a situation that you're anxious about, ask yourself how you'll feel tomorrow if you go through with it or how you'll feel tomorrow if you don't go through with it. That immediate feedback can give you the incentive to take that more courageous step. Think, which choice will I feel proud of later? Then decide to do that choice. The beautiful thing about hard times and challenges is that they allow us to do things now that we can feel proud of later. Robert B. Swastiner, author of The Courage Quotient, says that growing courage fundamentally involves two things, managing fear and increasing the willingness to act. Understand that fear is just a feeling. Allow yourself to observe your fear as a phenomenon, kind of like watching a raccoon or deer wander through your yard. Don't feed them or feel like you have to chase them away. Just accept and allow the fear to be there grazing. The willingness to act involves having a good reason to do so. That may come down to a decision that you want to become a more courageous person, or it may be that important goals you have require you to do some things that challenge you to be more courageous. Or it may be that somebody needs help now and you need to act immediately in order to save them. It has to mean something important to you in order to act in the face of fear particularly deciding to act now and not sometime later. Sometimes it can help to make a decision in advance to take action when needed in certain circumstances. Say, if somebody is in need of help or if something important needs to be said, we can decide that I'm a person who will act in this situation. Doing this can get you through that stunned moment of indecision so that you can dive in and save someone who's drowning or speak up when somebody's being insulting or crossing a line. Here's another way to look at managing fear and getting yourself to act. I play water polo, and even though I've been playing competitively for over 45 years now, I still get anxious before a game. One time when I was warming up for a game, I found myself trying to calm that anxiety. I paid attention to what I was doing, and part of it came down to looking forward to when the game would be over in about an hour from then. Looking at it, that struck me as kind of silly. I had trained hard for a long time, traveled to this tournament, let my teammates depend on me to bring my best, and I was thinking that I'd like the game to be over already? So it dawned on me that this anxiety is not something to focus on. I need to acknowledge and accept it, of course, but not as the main focus. The anxiety is just a feature, a predictable passenger along for the ride. My focus, I realized, has to be on my purpose. My purpose in this case can't be on winning the game. I don't have control over too many elements for that. How my teammates play, how the other team plays, the referees. My purpose is to play my very best. To be all in, completely absorbed and attentive and on during this game. The anxiety will always be there. Because not only is my nervous system getting revved up to help me play my best, but this matters to me. Of course I'd be anxious. That clarity made all the difference in the world. In terms of the pursuit of happiness, there was one very clear difference between focusing on the anxiety and focusing on my purpose. When I focused on the anxiety, I wasn't enjoying the game. In fact, I was looking forward to it being over. When I focused on my purpose, the game became more than fun. It became exhilarating. Over the years, these games have been the source of many of my own personal peak experiences. So one big step in managing fear is to shift your focus from your fear to your purpose and to allow the fear to take its proper place as a passenger in your experience, not as the main event. To grow more courage, search for the best within yourself. Your strengths your supportive people and circumstances, and the strength that you've earned through building your own character. And actively, ruthlessly look for the best in others as well. You may be surprised how much you'll find when you turn your attention to it. There's a whole lot of quiet heroism in the world. It's in play whenever we decide and commit to mastering an anxiety or depression or other psychological challenge. 
It shows itself whenever a couple commits to overcoming their harmful reactions and habits in order to make their relationship flourish. And each of us add to the wealth of humanity whenever we muster up our courage and turn our resolve toward a more creative, assertive, and expansive life. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. If you haven't heard of Audible, let me tell you about it. Audible is a subscription service that gives you access to thousands of amazing audiobooks from all over the world. If you're listening to this podcast, then you're probably familiar with the amazing positive benefits that audio programs can provide. There's no better platform than Audible when it comes to discovering new and exciting audiobooks to enjoy. Now, exclusively for my listeners, you can start your absolutely free 30-day trial and receive two free audiobooks just for trying out Audible. If you don't like it, cancel before the 30 days is up at no cost to you. Visit drjoelwade.com, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and click on the Audible banner. 